I, I just thought I'd give my thoughts very quickly on Batman Arkham Asylum, which I just finished. I've been playing on the Xbox 360, and it was one of those games where I really, really liked it, and I was interested and pretty much uh, enthralled the whole way through, and yet when I finished, I played it in about two settings, uh, two sittings, you know, um, when I finished I was like, wow, that game was fantastic, and yet it could have been so much better. It's, it's kind of strange that I walk away from a game thinking it was so great, and yet I had so many suggestions and so many kind of minor complaints that really keep it from being elevated to one of the all-time classics. Because when you, when you sat down playing this game, you really thought this one had potential to be one of the greats. And it's not. It's very good. But um, I guess I'll start out with the, the first impressions that you get upon playing this game. For me, this is the first game that actually felt like you were legitimately playing as Batman, probably since the original game on the NES. Um, you really felt like you were inhabiting this world, and the story was, you know, really authentic. Uh, the, this is a very well-researched, very true and faithful to basically all aspects of the Bat genre. Um, the fact that you see like characters like Harley Quinn and... The Joker, who I, I believe are basically for the first time in like voice acted on a game, it's amazing, and it's not offensive. They get the characters right, and it feels very, very right to be in this place. Feels like Batman, you know, and that's like getting that authentic feel right is by and large the number one goal of any game. Whether the game is that good or not, you like if nothing else, they got Batman and they got the they got the setting right. And I'm the guy who plays the game for the story. I really like when the story is is that true and faithful. Also, uh, the sound design for this game, or at least uh, the sound and visual design, is also very very good. What I especially like in this game is when you as Batman are hitting people and like countering moves and and kung fu fighting. Simplistic though I found the fighting system to be, which you have to resist the urge to button mash, because it kind of is that and it kind of isn't that, but I'll get back to that. When Batman hits a guy, the sound and the feel, you feel that impact. You feel like Batman is just wrecking that dude's skull. And this game is pretty much half of watching Batman just massacre a guy with a straight up pump kick to the chin in slow motion. And it never gets old, believe me, because you're waiting for that moment. You're waiting for the last counter where you just you super kick the shit out of some guy. Or you take a guy down and you just like elbow strike him to the solar plexus or snap his ankle. You're just like, man, Batman is just killing these guys. And it feels good. And it shouldn't feel that good because the combat does get very repetitive. But by the time you notice that it's getting repetitive, the game is over. So I guess it manages to pull that trick for just long enough to where it doesn't wear out its welcome. And that's, that's actually kind of a, a cute little balancing act where just when you're getting tired of it, you're done. <laughs> yeah. um, and the combat is... There's really only one attack button, the X button. And from there, you just kind of spice it up with your gadgets, and whenever, you, whenever your spider sense goes off, you hit the Y button and counter. And once you get the hang of that, once you've figured out how that works, you're pretty much unstoppable. There is no, there's no beating you once you've figured out that basically you're just waiting around for the, for the little spider sense to go off. You hit Y, you hit X until you see the little thing again, then you hit Y, and then, you know, just kind of repeat. And once you've done that, you'll get combos, you'll get experience points. There's really not that much of a challenge. The only time it really shakes things up is when you face guys who are a little bit different, like the, the guys with the knives and the stun batons, in which case you do have to be a little more evasive. Um, but beyond that, it, it, was a, it was a short, sweet experience, and one that was very good. The things that I thought could have been better. Um, number one, and I may get flack for this one, but I thought the stealth element was very weak. It, it feels really good swinging around on gargoyles, which, why there are gargoyles indoors puzzles me. But I get the need for Batman to swing around gothic architecture and, and take people out in silent. And, indeed, a stealth element is crucial to Batman for a guy who kind of does sneak up on people and take them down as silently as possible. You know, he's kind of ninja in that fashion. I get the need for that. On the other hand, these segments came off as feeling very repetitive to me, 
and really they're not anywhere as deep or as well designed as I think they intended. And by that, I mean, I, I think this game really intends for you to spend like five, ten minutes on every one of these being very careful, very methodical, and very slow-paced and plotting, when you don't really have to do that. It feels really good doing an inverted takedown. Like, that's amazing. You know, you're like, I just strung a dude up like Batman does. And you're like, yeah. And so you'll do that one, maybe two times. And from then on, the guys get smart enough to basically kind of stick together. So you can't really do that all that much. And besides that... The, the inverted takedown draws a lot of attention to you because the guy is screaming the whole time. So you take one guy down like that and everyone looks your direction. Then they start shooting you. And so losing them is also, it doesn't also make a whole lot of sense because all you really do is you just kind of spaz out on the grapple gun and swing between gargoyles. And for some reason, when you do that two, three times, they're just like, where do you go? I don't know, because they're looking right at you and the lighting is pretty good. So I don't know how they could possibly lose you. But they do. So the artificial intelligence in that sense is is... Uh, intentionally stupid so you can kind of keep doing your bat thing all over the place. The silent takedowns, on the other hand, are, are very good and it does feel very good to do the bat gliding thing all around the room. So, but I, I think where it's spoiled a little bit is you don't want to get shot, but at the same time you actually kind of want to do some pretty dirty tactics that are loud and noisy, which is kind of against Batman. Once you've found your, the way you like to take out those guys with guns, you'll pretty much do that every time. And so I kind of started dreading the Predator moments because uh, it, it, all, it all seemed very samey, and I pretty much did them the same way. And the way I did it was... Um, and later on, I saw a strategy video that basically told me to do the same thing. I found out that you can use the explosive gel. I would take a guy down, using him to draw everyone's attention to me. And while they were all coming in, I would spray like an explosive gel landmine on the floor. And once they'd all gather ground, I would explode it and just run around like punching them in the back of the head. And so, you know, I would resolve these things almost immediately just by using one guy as a lure, dropping down and kung fu fighting all of them into submission. And I would take a little damage sometimes when one guy would get up. Like, sometimes there's five or six guys. But by and large, it really wasn't a problem. And I don't think that was the intention of the designers. I think they really wanted you to run around and be stealthy. The other thing that I didn't like, and I guess this is, you know, me wanting getting a cake and, you know, wanting frosting on that cake was that I didn't think we fought nearly enough bat villains. I, I, you know, there's so many great bat villains. If you'd left any of them out, I would have probably complained, well, why didn't you throw this guy in? But uh, this movie, I'm sorry, this movie, um, this game is based almost entirely around the Joker, and that's probably as it should be. But uh, you never really fight any of them. And that's that's weird, because you'll kind of encounter a lot of bad guys, but you don't really fight them. You don't really even fight the Joker at the end. He runs around and swings at you, but uh, even he, at the very end, just kind of jumps up onto a catwalk and laughs at you as you fight minions, the same minions you fought the entire game. And that's the same way with basically every boss. You fight Harley, but you don't really fight Harley. Harley swings around on a chain laughing at you while minions attack you, and once you've beaten all the minions, she runs away, or once you've beaten them all, there's a cutscene that plays where you beat up Harley, but, you know, it's it's a, a pre-rendered cutscene, so it's not really you. Um, in fact, the only boss that you really end up fighting directly is Poison Ivy, and that one is, ironically, probably the best fight. But every other boss is basically just a gauntlet match where you're fighting the minions. Killer Croc shakes things up a little bit, but that's one of the more frustrating ones because that, that one is... You're, you're more fighting the controls and the camera than you are fighting Killer Croc. You're just really trying to run around and be silent and, and navigate these floating platforms, but you never really swing at Croc. Likewise, I thought Bane... You do fight Bane. And that was one of the better fights until you realize that you're going to fight Bane like seven, eight times because the Joker's Titan soldiers play and fight exactly like Bane. So the way you take Bane out is when he charges you, you throw a batarang in his face, that blinds him, he runs into a wall, then you beat him up, and that's basically it. 
Once you've beaten Bane in that fashion, the Titan soldiers are exactly like that. And the only time it really shakes things up is when you'll fight two at a time. You know, you fight two Titan soldiers at a time, exactly like Bane. So, there, there's, there's the sameness to the boss fights. It's kind of disappointing in, the, in that sense. It kind of would have felt good to fight some of the other villains. I, I think there was actually a lot of potential to fight characters like Mr. Freeze, Clayface... Um, I, I don't know. There's just a lot of other characters. Um, I was also disappointed by the Riddler. There's, it's it's really well done in the sense that the Riddler has all these unlockables that you can find little secrets that he's sprinkled throughout Arkham Asylum. I thought that was clever. That little setup where it's the Riddler kind of taunting you with these extras. You don't really get anything for these extras. You unlock some challenge modes, and you unlock little trophies, and you know you can view concept art and little profiles that are well done. But it's nothing really major. There's no new costumes. I think once you beat the game, you get a new costume, but otherwise it's nothing big. The reason I thought this was not that cool was because I was a little disappointed in the Riddler's riddles. They're really not that hard. And for the Riddler, you're kind of expecting really, really hard riddles. And so... Pardon me. This, the riddles are, are just insultingly easy, and it, it really all it is is you're just trying to find some item in the room that doesn't belong. And when you found that item, you've pretty much solved the riddle. It's it's nothing major. And so, like one riddle will be like, "Be careful! I've heard this kitten has a whip." And of course, you're looking for something to do with Catwoman. It, it's it it's not a riddle, you know. It's I, I was just disappointed because many times you weren't even bothered with the riddle. You were just looking for something specific to a bat villain, usually hanging on a wall or on a pedestal, or just something that looked like it was clearly the answer to one of the Riddler's riddles. That was just something that kind of nagged me. In the, I, I thought that wasn't exactly true to the Riddler. I, I thought, if, like, I thought the Riddler would would kind of look at those and be like, "Oh, please, I could do so much better." So, yeah. Anyway, for me, it was the prototypical weekend rental. I would rent this game, play it over the weekend, beat it, return it, and never look at it again. Because there's really not that much replay value. You might get some enjoyment out of the challenge mode. But unless you're kind of whoring out for achievements... Once you've beaten the story mode of the game, you've pretty much seen everything this game has to offer. And you'll probably be pretty tired of it. Um, but it's not... People hail this as, like, the Bioshock of this year. I read a review somewhere that said that. Um, it's not. It's it's good. It's a very solid title that you'll play for about two days, finish, and return to the store. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, hey, disagree with me by all means. I'm sure you guys found a lot to... to, to like and complain about. I know a lot of people didn't like Harley Quinn's design, and I'll admit... It uh, it didn't do that much for me, but I, I don't know really what I was expecting. I think people were expecting the same kind of, you know, the, the Harlequin jumpsuit type thing. Instead of the, the psycho nurse outfit with the thong. and Yeah, a little strange, but you gotta, you got to admit, Harley's getting the whole spirit of the asylum thing. You, know, you can't complain about that. And, by the way, Mark Hamill is, as usual, fantastic as the Joker. Uh, when you're talking about all-time great Jokers... You know, Heath Ledger usually gets the mention, you know, Jack Nicholson. But Mark Hamill, on the other hand, is vastly, vastly underrated and criminally under-mentioned, if that's a word, um, for his frequently solid performance as the Joker. In fact, I think whenever you think of the Joker, the voice you have in your head, whenever you read a comic that has the Joker in it, I think oftentimes you think of Mark Hamill's voice. And so... When it comes to all-time great jokers, you should consider that when you when you think of the voice that's in your head when you think of when you read the Joker's dialogue, and it's Mark Hamill to me. I I don't think Heath Ledger when I read comic book Joker. I, it was a great movie and a great performance, and undoubtedly the best supporting actor performance of that year. But um, he's he's left out of that debate. You know, Mark Hamill. Um, very good job all around, and. Uh, I think the Batman is the same one in the animated series as well. Again, very solid performance. Uh, also left out when in, when discussed of all-time great Batman performances, the animated Batman was very, very good. 
Anyway, that's Batman Arkham Asylum. I hope you enjoyed my review. I enjoyed the game. Uh, I hope you will, too. Give it a rent, by all means. Have a good one.